the little girl and bleeding woman. In our last story, Jesus showed his authority over wind, rain, and sea. With a word of might, he calmed the raging storm and saved the apostles from certain death. Once the storm had subsided, Jesus faced a man who was plagued with a legion of demons. The man raged and thrashed with the unholy spirit controlling his body. Jesus calmed the man's soul just as he did the storm. Now we see the tender heart of Christ take care of two girls. One had suffered from a debilitating illness, the other had tasted death itself. Jesus showed his compassionate power by kneeling down and healing both of them, as inspired by the Gospels. Hello and welcome once again to the Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham. In our last episode, we heard how Jesus calmed the stormy seas and cast out a legion of demons with nothing more than his words. He demonstrates his powerful command over the forces of nature and the forces of evil in this world. As the disciples witnessed his power, their wonder and amazement grew, even though their faith remained immature and easily shaken. Today, we'll see how the Lord cares for a long-suffering woman and a dying girl. We will once again hear how God's mercy, grace, and healing truly knows no limits and is available to all without respect for age, gender, position, or background. So let's hear the Word of God today. Another crowd flurried around Jesus. Their desperate cries for more words of wisdom and acts of healing were deafening. His popularity had stretched to the furthest reaches of Judea and Samaria. Not a traveler passed through the land without hearing his name. As Jesus often did, he walked beside the sea. He enjoyed the way the water and wind amplified his voice for all to hear. And if need be, he could make a quick escape onto a boat if things got out of hand. Jesus was tending to the crowd, teaching them the ways of the kingdom. A faint yell could be heard from the sea of faces. Jesus, he yelled. His head was barely poking out of the vast crowd. However, Jesus knew his voice. It was the voice of Jairus, one of the synagogue rulers. Jesus gestured for him to be let through. Jairus fell at his feet, sobbing. It was odd for the people to see a man of such power groveling before anybody. This showed Jesus' true influence. Jairus looked up at Jesus and said, Please, Lord, my daughter, my little girl, is sick to the point of death. There is no pain like a parent in fear of losing a child. Jesus could feel its palpable presence in Jairus. Say no more, Jesus said. Lead on, and I will go to your daughter. So Jesus got down from the boat where he was sitting and stepped into the crowd. They were violently seeking his attention. His fame had caused a great deal of chaos wherever he went. The crowd grabbed at him and shoved him in every direction. His disciples took it upon themselves to make a way for Jesus and Jairus to get through, but it was an exhausting task. As Jesus made his way through the forceful crowd, a small and quiet presence followed him. Her hand was small and shaking. Her once beautifully lush face was gray and fading. A woman followed closely behind Jesus, reaching out to touch him. Her entire body trembled as blood slowly dripped down her inner thighs. She had had a discharge of blood for over twelve years. The seeping blood from her lower half caused a great deal of pain and sapped much energy from her. Yet worst of all, it made her unclean in Jewish tradition. She was unable to enter the synagogues or temples. She was unable to go to feasts and celebrations. She was unable to marry. Her last penny was spent on physicians. They could not help her. She was hopeless and alone, until she heard about the man named Jesus. She could see Jesus, so close yet so far. He was only a few feet away, but the violent crowd was continually tugging or tossing her to the ground. She reached for him and missed. She tried to call out his name, but the people were too loud. She got up to her feet and tried to run towards him, but someone pulled her back and her face fell into the stony ground. She thought of giving up and just remaining on the ground. She would be trampled and her miserable life would be ended. No, she thought to herself. If I could just touch his garments, I know I will be healed. She lifted herself up and crawled towards Jesus. In one last effort, she threw herself towards him and barely touched the hem of his garment. She fell to her knees. Jesus stopped and turned around. Who touched me? He asked his disciples. 
They laughed. At first they thought he was joking. Are you serious? They asked him. Thousands of people are grabbing at you, and you ask, who touched me? Jesus shook his head. No, he clarified. This was different. Jesus looked around and saw the woman kneeling on the floor, being rammed in the head by random people in the crowd. Jesus knelt down and touched her shoulders. My daughter, your faith has made you well. Go and be free. Jesus said with a warm smile. Tears streamed down the woman's face. She was speechless. No words could quite thank Jesus properly. So she bowed to him and left. Please, Lord, we will be too late, Jesus begged. Jesus stood to his feet and continued to walk forward. As they made their way out of the main streets, the crowd began to settle. Only a few people remained, Jesus, Jairus, and the twelve disciples. They approached the home, and a member of Jairus' family ran to them. His face was grim. Dried tears and dirt caked his face. She's gone, he whispered to Jairus. Do not trouble the teacher any further. Jesus overheard the two men whispering. He interrupted them and said, It is not so, he said. Do not be afraid. Believe in me and watch. Jesus gestured for Peter, James, and John to come with him into the house. In a small courtyard, many people were wailing and weeping on the floor. The halls echoed with tears and mourning. It was the saddest thing Peter, James, or John had ever witnessed. It was clear that the little girl meant a great deal to them. Jesus walked up to the women weeping and asked, Why is everyone making such a commotion? The child is only sleeping. The woman scoffed at him. His words seemed insensitive and almost evil. However, behind Jesus' questions were a promise. He took Jairus, his wife, and the three men with him upstairs. They entered the door, and there, lying on the bed, was the girl's lifeless body. She could not have been more than twelve. Her once rosy cheeks were white. Jesus walked over to her body slowly and knelt by the side of her bed. He held her little hand in his. Jesus' eyes watered as he held the little girl. Death was never God's intention. He is the author of life. Jesus kissed the little girl's hand and said, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, arise. The girl's chest began to rise steadily up and down. Color was slowly returning to her face. Jesus smiled as her beautiful brown eyes opened. She sat up, stretched, and yawned as if she had awoken from a long nap. Jesus laughed with joy as the others in the room awed in amazement. The two parents rushed to their daughter's side, kissing her and hugging her. Jairus wiped tears from his eyes and looked up at Jesus with a face of gratitude. Jesus, Peter, James, and John left the room so the family could be together. As he left, he turned to one of the servants and asked for her to bring the little girl some food. As we begin today's reading, we find Jesus once again surrounded by great crowds of people, each one eager to hear his words and perhaps even witness a miraculous sign as he heals someone from the crowd. Jesus' renown was growing by leaps and bounds as more and more people in the region heard what he could do. This was certainly an annoyance, even a threat to the religious leaders. They wanted Jesus just to go away so they could have control and power over the people. Of course, not all of the religious elite despise Jesus, and today we meet one such person, a synagogue ruler by the name of Jairus. He had gone out that day to find Jesus. Whether out of true respect and belief or just out of sheer desperation, we do not know, but the fact was that his precious young daughter was in bed at home, sick and dying. Sickness and death are really the great equalizers. No matter what one's wealth or power or position may be in society, when illness or the threat of death comes, we are all the same. We are all in a helpless state. And so Jairus did what any loving parent would do. He sought out every last answer in order to try to save his child. Jesus was seemingly his last hope. So when he found him that day, he pleaded with Jesus not from a position of authority, but one of deep and desperate need of help. Jesus immediately stopped what he was doing and went with Jairus. It is a reminder that so often in life, the interruptions are in fact an opportunity for ministry. 
As Jairus led him and they pushed through the crowd, suddenly Jesus stopped and asked an unusual question. Who touched me? To all around, it seemed to be a ridiculous question. There were people everywhere. He was being touched all the time. But Jesus had felt something different. Power had gone out from him in that moment. And so a woman confessed to touching him, hoping that even just a brush against the hem of his garment would heal her disease, a lifelong problem with bleeding which made her unclean and unhealthy. This tragic condition had left her destitute and alone, unable to even enter the temple of worship to worship God or to celebrate with her people. Jesus looked at her with kindness and grace and told her to go home in peace and fully healed her because of her faith. This is a great moment in Scripture which shows us not only our Lord's caring heart and immense power, but His ability to know when we cry out to Him. It also shows us that Jesus had both full control and full awareness of His power. Not everyone who touched Him was healed, though certainly some in the crowd had ailments that Jesus could have healed. But when this woman approached Him with such faith and touched Him, Jesus allowed healing power to depart from His body to meet her deep need of healing and restoration. It wasn't by her might or her actions or even her touch that she was healed, but by faith and power in Christ. While He was still with the crowd, someone came to inform Jairus that his daughter had passed away. There was no need, it seemed, for Jesus to proceed to His home because nothing could be done. But as we know, what is impossible for man is possible with God. I love how Jesus responds in Mark 5, 36. But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. Oh, that we could live by those words. Do not fear, only believe. Jesus continued onto the home of Jairus, taking only his three closest disciples, Peter, James, and John. They arrived to quite a scene, mourners already wailing and making a commotion outside the home. He spoke calmly to them, assuring them that the girl was not dead, only sleeping. But nobody believed, and they laughed at his words. Jesus then entered the home with his three disciples and the girl's parents. And going to her bedside, he took her hand and spoke tenderly over her. Arise, little girl. And at his command... She shook off the chains of death and rose, fully recovered and restored into the arms of her joyous parents. Jesus is still speaking words to God's children today through the Bible, by His Spirit, calling us who are spiritually dead to rise to a new life that only He offers, the one who is the resurrection and the life. This is the message, the glorious, gracious message of the good news, the gospel. The God who healed the sick and raised the dead is able to heal and give life to all who will call upon His name. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Lord, we call upon Your name, and we trust You as our Lord and Savior. May we follow You all the days of our lives, and may our hearts always be devoted to You. Thank You for Your restoration and healing in our lives and the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. You can download the Pray.com app and make Bible study and prayer the priority of your life. And if you appreciate this podcast, please share it with someone else. I also want to encourage you to go to jackgraham.org. That's jackgraham.org for we have resources that are free and available for you so that you may know Christ and grow in Him. Let me also invite you to something very special with myself and my wife, Deb, as we are planning two trips in 2024. One is to Israel, departing April the 1st, to go to the land of the Bible and to walk where Jesus walked. It's a trip of a lifetime. And then an Alaskan cruise adventure in the summer of 2024, in which we will have wonderful times of friendship and fellowship. We'll have worship services and experiences around God's Word and seeing the wonders of God's creation. So two opportunities in 2024 to travel with us to Israel or to Alaska or both. You can go to Prestonwood.org for information. God bless you.
This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.